hey, use code Bengal at sign up on FanDuel. You get a free $20 to play with. Also, check out my links down in the description for Twitter, Twitch, second and third channels for all different types of content that you might enjoy. So be sure to check it out and let's get into the video. What is going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video today. We face the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers and it should be a good one. They're six and four. We are seven and three. As you can see in the conference standings, it is anyone's game here in the Sun Belt. ULM in second place at three and seven because they are three and two overall. But Western Kentucky we play today, six and four overall. If they win today, they would tie our overall record as well as conference record. So this is a very important game for us today. We got to win it. We have to. Teams like Texas State, who are, they, they had the second uh, most wins outside of Ozark State in the division, yet they've only won one conference matchup. I say division, obviously conference, but they have five wins overall, only one win in the conference. Very, very bad. But I cannot stress to you guys enough how important this game is today. We need to win this game today. As we talked about last episode, we do have some award finalists. Pretty much all it is is Devin White, who's having an incredible season. He's been an absolute beast. I believe we have, yeah, Omar Williams is in the top 12 for the Boletnikov. And then, um, do we have any defensive linemen here? No, but the best linebacker should go to Devin White. So that's really cool. And I think that's pretty much all we're in line for. Nothing for the uh, for the Jim Thorpe. No solid defensive backs, I guess. And then no, no kicker. But uh, Devin White having an incredible season for us. He probably will take home two awards, which will be the best linebacker and the best player uh, defensively in college football with the Bednarik Award. And even the Bronco Nagurski Award. Could see that happening. I do have... A recruiting update obviously you guys see we have a bunch of points to allocate well that's because we had some players who commit both to Ozark State Julian Peters a 69 overall linebacker nice glad to bring him in and I really like what he brings to the table maybe not a guy that's gonna play in year one probably not but if you guys can add plus you know five overall to him next season when the training hits uh, which will be in a season five where he'll actually play. We're probably going to redshirt him season one. Well, he's going to be much better. That speed's going to be around an 80. Tackling probably maybe around 80. Hit power up. Block shed's already pretty good. Could be a very, very good player for us. And then we also got Adam Jones, a cornerback. He's a gem. Great speed. Good man. Good zone. Press is all right. Block shed could be better, but good pursuit. Not so bad hit power, just wish tackling was a bit higher. But with that speed, with that jumping, 5'11", 191, like, he's not bad. He's not bad at all. And this is a guy that we could potentially move to safety. And he already has incredible speed. And he just could fit in perfectly. Unfortunately, Terrence Allen, a four-star, 77 overall, gem of a wide receiver commit to the Oklahoma Sooners and we also lost out on an athlete Leon Ewing as he went to Penn State so we're going to remove both of these guys from our uh, recruiting list and there are a lot of guys on here who we're not even going after that we could actually potentially bring in just because we're you know so high on their list already guys like Zach Morris Chris Ferris Zach Johnson Napoleon Merrick we do have a lot of points overall I'm going to go into search here and I'm going to see if there are any decent players with a low lock percentage that we can potentially steal. I know it's very late, but I wonder if we can take somebody from a star school, a stud player. It was kind of unfortunate with this recruiting class. There weren't really any players that were fantastic at the positions that I was looking at. So I really wanted to improve our linebacking core. And there just weren't a ton of really good players. We are going to scout these guys, see if anyone really jumps out. And wow, already one really, really jumps out. Oliver Nunez, a 78 overall gem. Three-star recruit. Is there a chance we can land him? I'm going to go all in. 
and see if there's a chance. Robert Hines, not a bad athlete. What position would he play? Uh, looks like linebacker. 89 speed, 73 tackle, decent hit power, decent pursuit. Coverage isn't anything crazy. How much do you weigh? 6'2", 207. So this is a linebacker, I think. And that's exactly what I said I needed. So I'd definitely offer a scholarship. Can we steal from you know some of these powerhouses like LSU, USC, Texas, and Florida State? I think it's unlikely. Uh, Lorenzo Brown's a bust. Here's a kicker. It doesn't really matter on him. Uh, might go after him. And then Stephen Branch, cornerback. I'm going to put all my points into Robert Hines and see if there's a shot. So adding these two players I think would be fantastic. Really like the potential. I took points away from Manuel Bell because I think we're really going to be able to get him. And I added them into Robert Hines. I want to put 500 into him. The question is, where do I take points away from other players? I want Brandon Campbell really badly. I'd love Chase Moses. I don't want to take those points out of Zach Morris. I know it's not many. I want Will Jordan really badly. We're not going to get Scott Jackson. I want Willie Parrish really badly. I just don't know if we'll be able to get these guys. And, and all the good players I wanted to go after, specifically at the linebacker position, they were all from up north. No pipeline states, not a lot of the south, and that was just super disappointing. All right, Kirk Graves I'll take uh, points out of. I don't think we're going to allow him to go to FIU. I just don't. So we're going to put them back into our athlete here, Robert Hines. 500 on the nose, and that is recruiting for this episode now we're going to focus on the task at hand. I doubt this is going to be a doubleheader because of uh, the length I just took to go over recruiting with you guys. But nevertheless, we are going to play Western Kentucky. We talked about how important this game is, and they are not bad. We've definitely struggled with them in the past. We'll see if we can get the W here today. Western Kentucky has a five-star defensive end visiting today. They're really going ham on the offensive or defensive line, I should say. Four-star defensive end as well. Also a three-star tight end, but wow. Zach Davis, is that someone we're going to have to play next year? I kind of hope not. Their top player is injured, though. Their running back, Furby. And we struggled with him last year. I still can't get over his name. Scott Lewis is probable. Colby Spencer is still questionable. That's crazy how Scott Lewis is rehabbing so quickly. Yet, um, Colby Spencer has been questionable for like three weeks in a row. Might get him back for the conference championship game. I don't know. All right. LT Smith Stadium. It is a packed house for Ozark State versus Western Kentucky. And uh, I like these Western Kentucky uniforms. They're very clean. Not a lot going on. And I said we'd come out in the alternate soon, but I think I'm going to wait till we're back at home. We are, of course, on the road here in Western Kentucky. It's a great scene. Haven't been here since season one. And the foliage with the trees looks awesome. Big fan. But uh, I would be a big fan of our offense today if we can come out and score 50 points on Western Kentucky. Here we go. Scott Lewis is back. So probable meant that he's going to go. And we got to be careful of him. Don't want him getting injured. Especially not on the uh, first play of the game. But Kendrick Cunningham, he's back to back up. And Scott Lewis is back to being the guy. Wide open over the middle. Omar Williams, it got covered quick, but Omar went up and got it. 32-yard pickup. There you go, Scott. Ah, spin move was a little bit too late. Get open, Scott. That's a good juke move. Only a two-yard run, though. I don't know how much I want to run him today. Third and six, Kendrick Cunningham back in the game. We're going to go over the middle, wide open to Roland Francisco. Good getaway speed. Takes up another couple of yards. Goddard rolling out. We're going to run. Look at the speed and the pursuit of 35. <laughs> We're getting decking out of bounds before uh, we get decked. That's just a ducking out of bounds before we get decked. Yeah, he was coming for blood. Rolling out with Goddard. I think we're going to run. He's very slow. That's a sack. Unreal. We're going to try to fit it in there. Jake Rodriguez first down. Great delivery from Goddard right on the money. 
Read option. We're going to hand it off to Scott Lewis. And he is stopped, Lewis. Third and goal, though. Looking for a touchdown. We're going to throw to the flat. Scott Lewis. What is that slowdown? Run for the end zone, Scott. We're going to settle for a field goal try. Slippery Pete slips it in. 3 0 in favor of the Ozark State Outlaws. As Arkansas is ranked in the top 10, LSU unranked, but it's 38 38 going into OT. Wow. That's a great first play. Drew Eccles. What are you doing? Eccles going to run. And he's actually got it. Devin White can't wrap up. Thankfully, Derek Higgins came over from that cornerback spot and made the tackle. Eccles going to run. Somebody wrap him up. It's Daryl Bradford continuing his great career here as an Ozark State outlaw. Came on really strong late in the, uh, the second half there. I don't think he got his first sack till kind of midway through the third season here, which was his sophomore season. It still is. And then, of course, he's getting a sack like every game now. He's just a second-half player of the season. He's a beast. Got it facing pressure. We're going to roll out. And we have that wide-open Omar Williams. It's going to be a touchdown. 56 yards. I say wide-open, but when it's underthrown, it led right back into coverage. It's obviously extremely contested, but Omar Williams does what he does. He comes down with the football. It's 10-0. And Pedro Goddard, the ringmaster, with more circus throws and more touchdowns. And 10-0. As we, hopefully, will continue the shutout. It's a run. Oh, that's... Uh, uh, can't even speak. Everyone's getting run over. Unreal. Devin White got rocked. Devin Robeson, get out of my way. Oh, no. Can we get over there? That's going to be a touchdown. We're not pitching a shutout anymore. Oh, my. Yeah, that's a great touchdown. We went back to our old ways of not being able to tackle in, the, in that drive. And LSU with the upset over Arkansas State, led by Justin McMillan. Good screen. Rob Gaither. Good run after the catch. Read option. Goddard up the middle. Why do we not have anything like that with Colby Spencer when we run, uh, run read option? They just don't work as well. We're going to lob that up. Oh my god. Ryan Muller. When we're with Pedro Goddard. We got to try the circus stuff. Just throw it up on the run and see what happens. There we go, Omar. Good catch. There we go, Rob Gaither. The classic slant to all reliable. And we're inside the 10. His second catch of the day. Scott Lewis down to the one. And Scott Lewis untouched into the end zone for the touchdown. We're going up 17-7. Devin White. Ah, I can't wrap up. Good tackle from Edwin Garrett. That's going to be wide open. Robeson can't wrap up. I feel like Chris Chase gets burned a lot. Yeah, just... Oh, was that my guy? Yeah, it was. Come on. Echo's going to run. Devin White. Good tack. It looks like Colt 45. Colt Nash finished it. Is he going to keep stiff arming? Okay. Devin White. Use your speed. Get there. Good tackle. Is that going to count as a tackle for a loss? I wonder. I don't think so. Why is Devin White in a defensive end? Why is Sandoval Slaughter standing up? 
Eccles trying to run, breaking so many tackles, and he finally goes down. Devin White didn't do it. That's Mike Lee from the safety spot. That's what I'm talking about. This guy is all over the field making plays. How does he have so many sacks? He plays strong safety. I don't even feel like we blitz a lot from the defensive back area of the field. From the secondary is what I meant to say. As that's going to be a touchdown. I'm holding Y, man. Give me the interception. Xavier Lane, TD. Damn. Western Kentucky right back in it before the half. That's open. Good catch, Rob Gaither. Oh, great route from Hunter Register. Another first down. Oh, yeah, that's a half. I didn't... I, yep. I was not paying attention to the clock. Okay, that's my bad. That's my bad. Eccles taken off. Good good tackle. Devin White with the sack. He's behind the line. When he wraps up, I mean, he's killer. When he's getting bowled over by running backs and quarterbacks, not as killer. It's a screen. Get over there, Jeff. It's going to be just short of the line to gain by about four yards. Looks like Western Kentucky probably going to punt the ball back. We had a three-point lead. Could be more if, uh, you know, a number of different things didn't happen. But they did. So, just got to extend now in the second half. Get out, Goddard. We're throwing up field to Scott Lewis. He makes a juke. He breaks a tackle, and it's good to have him back. All the way down the field for 42 yards. Handoff, Scott Lewis makes a move in space, gets wrapped up after five. Goddard out of the pocket, throwing on the run off the mark. We're throw down. Six yard gain on second down. Read option. Goddard. Just got it. We're gonna have to throw it out of the back of the end zone. Just nothing's getting open. As far as I can tell. Pedro Goddard having a pretty good day. I haven't tossed an interception yet, but we are going to settle for the field goal as Slippery Pete comes back out. And it is good. It's a read option. You got to wrap up, Mike. Nope. Oh, that's a great tackle in space by Edwin Garrett. Western Kentucky can take the lead with a touchdown. We gotta make sure that doesn't happen. It's gonna be an option. Here's the pitch. And Devin White says no. Quentin Baker loses three. And he was having a great game up to that point. Still averaging over 10 per carry. Still is having a great game. That was just such a big play. And it brings up fourth and five. Western Kentucky going for it. And they're gonna throw. Where is Chris Chase? No one can wrap up. Western Kentucky with the 19-yard pickup and the conversion on fourth and five. No, that's going to be down at the one. He's just bobbing and weaving, getting all types of yards. Quentin Baker, pretty good. I can only imagine what their starting running back would do. Furby, he's still here and not injured. We run to Fortenberry, and he has the touchdown. With the extra point, Western Kentucky going to take a 21-20 lead with four minutes to go here in the fourth. 
don't think we're gonna block it, so I will see you guys on offense. It's an even matchup so far. Similar points. We just have a ton of yards. Haven't been able to convert with touchdowns. And Western Kentucky has. That's been the story. It's been field goals for us. We have, what, two of them? Oh, that's open. Goddard finds Rodriguez. Jake Rodriguez. Oh, he gets lit up. Picks up 30, though. Learn that ball up. Register. That's a good play by the defensive back, DeAndre Ferris. Maybe had a... Maybe had Omar over the top. All my suggestions are four verts. I don't like that. But I don't really like to pick my own play all the time. It makes it... Uh, Kind of too easy if I can just spam things that I know are going to be super effective. I like to pretend like an offensive coordinator is calling plays. And you guys know I have A. I can't throw that. We're just going to lob that up. Rob Gaither make a play. That's not it. That's not it. And he runs through Goddard. He's still breaking tackles. He's down the sideline. Scott Lewis is our last hope. Oh my god. And Pedro Goddard is back to looking like a circus clown. All right, we need to stop. They're really taking all the time, huh? And they're going to pass it. I, I took the safety out. Oh, I thought they were... So stupid. Uh, I thought they were going to run it with all that time they were taking off. And they did not. So it's an eight-point game. We can still tie with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Not the end of the world. It's going to be a little bit more difficult now with that stupid error. Good pancake. Kendra Cunningham has space. Shoot back. Still going. Another good return. Good blocking on that one. Bring up that safety. Oh, no. We throw it away. That's open. Omar takes a big hit, survives it, and we're down to under two minutes. Rob Gaither, open. Goddard slings it, finds him. First down. Gain of 22. There we go. Omar. Nope. Scott Lewis. <laughs> We're going to throw that ball. Scott Lewis up the seam. Touchdown. We need a two-point conversion now. Down by two. Goddard throws for over 400 in this game. We're going to throw the ball. Let's make that an out. Let's make this a slant. Let's find out what's open. They're blitzing. And we are... A fumble with Pedro Goddard. Thought that Jake Rodriguez would maybe stand in the way or he'd play coverage. That's why we didn't throw the ball. Well, maybe we had him. Damn. Can have to go for the onside. And it is recovered by the Hilltoppers. We need to stop now. Three timeouts. First down ends it. Second and seven. Here's the run. You need to wrap up. Thank you. And to run up the middle. And it's shut down. Big tackle. I think that was Fat Albert. And they're going to go for a field goal. That's fine. Kick up. Good. Doesn't matter. Touchdown wins the game. I mean, it does matter because a field goal would have won previously. We need a touchdown to win. 54 seconds. Let's go, Pedro. Third and one. We're running. Pedro, down the sideline. We're stepping out of bounds. Gain of nine. That's open. Wide open. Ryan Muller. Get out of bounds. 35-yard gain. We're threatening. 25 seconds left. Not out of the woods yet. We need the end zone. We need to find Pater for the victory.
We're throwing that. Eh. Doesn't have the arm strength. 19 seconds. And is Pedro injured? What's happening? Pedro Goddard now injured. It's on backup quarterback. Porter. We got to throw it away. Third and ten. There we go. That's got to be open. Roland Francisco first down. Big third down conversion. Chris Porter delivers a strike. Down to 11 seconds. A sack kind of ends the game for us, which is bad. No sacks. We are going to roll out, though. We're going to run with Chris Porter. We're going to dive. He fumbles, but out of bounds. There's still hope. If that went out of the back of the end zone, the game would be over. Or into the end zone. Second and inches. Six seconds. Game on the line. We're throwing the drag. Rob Gaither, touchdown. We take the lead. 32-31 with three seconds to play. And we are not going to go for two. I don't want to get picked, picked two to does that even, no wait, does that exist, exist in college? No, I think it would be a dead ball. It, it'd be a dead ball. All right, 32-31. Porter rolls out. And is out of bounds, but there's a flag? Well, we saw a flag pop up. It's gonna be a hold, we'll see what they do here. Probably decline. And we have a 32-31 lead. Three seconds to go. And Goddard's out for the next three weeks with a bruised shoulder. All we need is good kick coverage. Will they even bother bringing it back? No. It's going to come down to one final play. We've been beat by the Hail Mary before. Let's not have it happen again. Eccles throwing on the run into traffic. And it hits the ground. Game over. The Ozark State Outlaws survive. They mount the comeback. And they beat Western Kentucky in one of the craziest games we've played. It, of course, is an ESPN classic. And what a game it was. GG Western Kentucky. And that is game rank number one. My highest ESPN Classic score ever. Over a thousand. What's your highest uh, score for an ESPN Classic? You guys are going to have to let me know, but what a game. And it's Chris Porter, the redshirt freshman, that comes in and mounts the comeback. Finishes it, I should say. Two for three, 18 yards, and of course, that all-important touchdown. As Pedro Goddard dominated throughout most of the game, but just could not finish for us as he was injured. And I hate how this glitch happens. I'm trying to look at passing. 444 yards or 45 yards. Two touchdowns. Rushing. Scott Lewis was ineffective in his uh, comeback game. Thankfully, we are getting our starter back next week. Colby Spencer. He should be coming back. Receiving. Rob Gaither. Six catches. 79 yards. A game-winning touchdown. Scott Lewis with a receiving touchdown. Absolute beast. In um in the passing game, that's where we really like to utilize him. Omar Williams, four catches, 112, and a touchdown. Blocking doesn't really matter too much. Devin White, two tackles for loss, letter team and tackles. Daryl Bradford with a sack. We had three sacks. Bradford, Mike Lee, and Devin White. One sack from each level of the defense. Secondary, linebackers, and defensive line. Interceptions, zero. But what a game. But that is gonna do it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.